This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Real, honest, entertaining, live. DBL starts right now. Three, two. Welcome to Daily Blast Live. It is Friday, July the 2nd. I'm Steph here with Erica and Al. Jeff has got the day off. He's yes. living his best life, so. Let's get started. All right, Mandy Moore found herself in a pickle while flying with her infant son. Mandy was on American Airlines with her four-month-old Gus, and she tweeted, Hey, American Air, we are stuck in D.C. from a cancelled flight, and our bags will take hours to get to us. But I have a four-month-old baby and need the car seat base that was checked to get anywhere. Help! 
So the airline responded quickly, tweeting back, quote, we're here to help, and said they would direct message her with details on her luggage. But some people felt that Mandy was using her celebrity status to get some special treatment. So one person tweeted, quote, I'm fairly confident you can afford to purchase a child seat in an airport, especially since your father is an American Airlines pilot. This post feels desperate and out of touch. Another said, quote, I hope American Airlines helps the average Joe as well as they would a celebrity. And Mandy's dad is in fact an American Airlines pilot. She posted this pic of the two of them at the flight deck back in 2019. So guys, do you think that Mandy Moore was just a mom that is in desperate need of help? Or do you think she was trying to use a celeb status to get a bit of special treatment? I think she's the mother of a four month old and she just reacted. I mean, I see moms traveling with their very small children and it is a Olympic sport. So I don't think that there, the thought process behind like, oh, I'm a celebrity, I'm going to get more attention or, you know, I should get special treatment was probably even something in her mind. Erica. I this think Erica's being really cute, she, isn't she? Erica, she is a celebrity and she has traveled before. All right, she's not on some kind of make a wish thing. She's been all over the world. She knows what happened. She has had flights canceled before and their car seats. This isn't some relic from Indiana Jones. You just go get another one and you ask to be reimbursed. So I think that she was trying to trying to be like, hey, I'm just like you guys. I'm a frustrated mom traveling, but she's not. I felt like it was a little out of touch. Okay. It's OK, but I'm not. Steph, you need to break the tie no. here. All right. So, first of all, it was the first time she'd ever traveled on a plane with a four month old. Right. I can't imagine the stress. The closest I can get to that is I had my godson in the car with me once <laughs> when he was like maybe four or five, and I was really scared to drive the car because I was like, this life is in my hands, and I was really afraid of everything. So, I can only imagine if I've literally just had a four month old baby, I'm traveling and I'm really stressed out and I don't know what to do. I understand that. But I totally think she pulled out the celeb car. Aha! Totally. Aha! Because, I mean, come on. It's Mandy Moore. She's used to everyone like probably running around after a little bit. And she probably thought, oh, yeah, if I send this tweet, they're going to have like a car seat waiting for me. Do you not think? Yeah. Or Come on. I, I just I really feel like, yes, she's been a celebrity for a long time, yeah. most of her life, but she's only been a mom for four months. So I, I, I just feel like sometimes you do things, especially when you're like stressed and under, you know, just a lot going on with a small child. I, I agree, I agree, but I guarantee, well, I don't know American Airlines. I'm just saying, if it was the regular Joe that tweeted that, would they have had an automatic response? Would they? Maybe. Probably not. I don't I'm think I'm just going to say this, Steph, and this I is totally random. Would. I've had to change a bunch of flights in the last couple weeks because family issues and things like that. I have been on, and I told my girl last night, I've spent hours on the phone with Orbitz, and their customer service has been patient, like hours. And I just have gotten off the phone, and I've wondered, like, should I have gotten his name, and like, we've been friends. <laughs> like, I've gotten <laughs> such good customer service, I feel like it needs to be set on television. Okay. Orbitz has hooked it up. I am not being paid and to say that. also has a blue <laughs> tick, so I'm not saying that. Anyway, uh, moving on, Megan McCain is done with The View. So Megan announced that she was leaving the talk show after four years in order to spend more time with her family in Washington, D.C. But she also took a swipe at the media for how they negatively portrayed the female host. Check it out. The media needs to do a better job of covering the women on this show in general. As Joy pointed out, it is not a fair fight. We are covered with deep misogyny and sexism by the media. Though if, if five men were doing what we do every day, I really do believe that we would probably have a Pulitzer Prize at this point. No one wants to watch what five men do this, Joy? Megan. Yeah. Then they've, tr no. yeah, they've tried that <laughs> with five men watching talking. It. No one cares. <laughs> Hmm. Joy Behar also called her a formidable opponent and no snowflake. And Megan said she will stay on the show until the end of the month. So what do we all think? Do you reckon she's just done with all the fighting? It's a lot. That's a lot of energy every day. Um, and I do not, I know a lot of people don't care for Meghan McCain. I have a tremendous amount of respect for anyone who goes in every day and speaks from their own mouths, mm -hmm. their opinions and views of the world. I think anytime we completely just close out dissenting opinions, yeah. that is a disservice to everyone until it infringes on your human rights. But in terms of having a conversation 
and the conversations are ab across the spectrum, that is very much needed for growth in society. And I really commend Meghan McCain for sticking it out for as long as she did, because to get up and do this every single day, knowing that you are going to be hit from every angle is a lot. And there's also a time frame on that. Most people do not stay in this line of work for 40 years. I mean, mm. there there is something to that. No, I agree with what you're saying, definitely. Oh, yeah, talking of, like, getting hit with stuff. So it was my and I, me and I'll share a birthday pretty much, like, yeah. within less than 24 hours of one another. And, uh, like, DBL posted something. It was like, happy birthday, Stephanie. And the first comment was like, I hate her voice. And I was like, <laughs> yo, it's my Day. I was like, what? So I can only imagine, like, right. you know what I mean? And it's like, let's be honest, I'm not exactly Angelina Jolie set up here, like, struggling with the paparazzi. So, I mean, like, can you imagine, yeah. like, the stress she must go under every single day? You know, it's a lot. I was going to ask, because, Erica, you said something that got me thinking. I wonder if we're going to see a shorter shelf life for pundits, because it's not like, you know, in 1985, Meghan McCain could say what she said on the show and take her microphone off and go about her life. But now she takes her microphone off, turns her phone on, and it just explodes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People are yelling stuff from the car. I don't know, but I'm sure people do say things in public as well. And it is now a 24-hour cycle, and I wonder if we're going to see people on both sides just burn out. Like, I just want to leave this and go move in the mountains and turn my internet off because it, it's so much over the course of such a short period. So maybe four years is like the shelf life we should be yeah. looking at. Well, I said this uh, when we were talking about Sharon Osbourne. It's like, you know, there she had said things that were problematic before everything exploded. And sometimes, especially in situations like that where you're not super open and aware to how the world around you is evolving and changing, you can stick around for too long and then you get burned on that. Yeah. So I think we're seeing these examples like all over the place and I think Meghan McCain is just taking responsibility and getting at it early. No, I, I think she makes a very valid point as well, like saying she misses her friends, her family and where she's from. I mean, that's a really, oh my gosh. I mean, speaking from someone who lives across the world from my family, I, I, I get it, you yeah. know, so yeah. Good on her. Good, Good luck. Her, yeah. She had a great run. Yes, she did. All right. Talking about birthdays and me and Al aging. Sorry, love that. Yes. Into that. Someone else <laughs> that doesn't want to hear that she's aging gracefully. So don't tell Julianne Moore that she is because she told As If magazine that there is so much judgment around the phrase because she said there is no way to age ungracefully. She added that no one has an option about aging. It's not a positive or a negative thing. It's just part of the human condition. So why are people always talking about aging like it's something that we have control over? So do you guys think that she has a point and do you think you can age ungracefully? I think you can. Yeah. <laughs> In what way? What do you mean? I was like, yeah. I, I'll just speak from a male's perspective, uh, like I have a choice. Uh, you know, I see a lot of my friends that are f fighting it and still doing things that are a little bit below their age range. Example, and they look example, hanging please. out in places where we used to hang out when we were younger, but now it's like, dude, you're my age. You're in your 40s. You look like you own this place. But they still look <laughs> like they're like still in there like, hey, we're having fun. There's a sadness to somebody still trying to hold on oh to their early 20s in their mid 40s. There is. You look bananagrams. <laughs> bananagrams. <laughs> you do. <laughs> um, I think that some people are like, you know, what I was only supposed to be here for like you know 40 to 50 years and uh -huh. they just completely decide to you know what it, it is what it is and and you know I understand what she's saying though because we don't have control over aging and we hope to age gracefully but I think that when people say that they the intention is coming from a positive place I mean you do have some control over it I mean that's what facelifts and Botox is for but what do you what do you hear when somebody if I go Erica you are aging gracefully what do you hear? I'm like, when people say that I look younger, that, or I don't know if anyone's told me I was aging gracefully, but I'd be like, yes, it's <laughs> magic. You know, yeah, and Erica takes, you want to take care of yourself, right? Whether it's working out, whether it's watching what you eat, whether it's consuming less alcohol or not drinking, you know, everyone can age gracefully if you like take care of yourself. That's the biggest thing. You've got to have self-love and self-care. Is it insulting to you? If somebody well, said that, that's insulting. Probably but. if someone said it to me now, because all the Botox in my face is no longer there. Look at the expressions. You still can blame. So it. I mean, <laughs> that, that would be a very sensitive time to be saying aging gracefully when my Botox isn't there, because this is my face.
<laughs> What's great. wrong with your face? I'm just saying, Every even if someone said to me no. this moment, you're aging gracefully. No, no, no. <laughs> Every time Steph goes to get something done, I'm like, will you stop touching your face? There might come a time <laughs> where you might no. feel like, hey, I need to. Now is not that time. Do not do that proactively. Yes. I am just telling you. I know I'm going to get Prevention yelled at. Prevention is better than the cure, people. Whatever. Okay, coming up All on right. DBL, I'm going to ignore that I forever. love it. <laughs> and then we get an Angelina Jolie, a thing. Well, find out where they've been spotted out together recently. And bye-bye bikinis. I've got the scoop on the One Piece trend celebrities have been rocking lately. Check it out. It's in today's Fashion Fix Friday. Closed captioning provided by... More than half of eligible Americans are fully vaccinated as health professionals continue encouraging everyone to get their dose. But a video posted on BitChute, viewed more than 9,000 times, claims we could be sterilizing an entire generation of men with the vaccine. So let's verify. Does the COVID-19 vaccine cause fertility issues in men? Our sources are a research study from the University of Miami and Albert Shu, a fertility doctor at the University of Missouri. There's no evidence whatsoever that the COVID-19 vaccine has any impact on male fertility. In fact, the opposite may be true. Researchers say a small percentage of men who survive COVID-19 have a lower sperm count. In general, it's safer to get the vaccine than actually getting the disease. Researchers at the University of Miami studied fertility rates in young men before and after the vaccine and saw no changes over a 70-day period. Chu says it's too soon to know the long-term effects, but the research is promising. It is extremely difficult to prove a negative, and I think any papers that really say that, honestly, from a scientific standpoint, are a little bit premature. But again, folks that are considering it, please rest assured that there's no convincing, concerning evidence that there's a negative impact on male or female infertility. So we can verify there is no evidence the COVID-19 vaccine causes fertility issues in men. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Stephanie Jones with the week's top style and trending news. The summer heat is on and celebs are daring to bear this bathing suit trend. And could this look put you in the cone of shame? We'll find out in my What the Fashion moment of the week. It's Fashion Fix Friday. First, Cardi B, who never disappoints when it comes to her style, is celebrating baby number two with rapper husband Offset and doing it as only Cardi B can. She wowed crowds at last week's BET Awards during her performance where she wore a bedazzled Dolce & Gabbana bodysuit with a cutout that screams Cardi B is for baby bump. She followed that up on Instagram with photos of herself, Offset, and their daughter, Culture, but since we're daytime television, we can only show you parts of them. But in a very twitching photo, she and Culture donned matching drape dresses and traditional headscarves. While Cardi also wore oversized earrings and bracelets, it was all in honor of her Afro-Caribbean heritage. Now, one thing for sure, if Baby B has anything to look forward to, it's a closet full of fabulous hand-me-downs. Next, we're suiting up and heading to the pool with these celebs who proved that one is not the loneliest number when it comes to swimsuits. 
Celebs are loving one-piece bathing suits like Gabrielle Union, who's flawless in a shimmering green suit, and Eva Longoria, who looks radiant in white. Rebel Wilson is a short sleeve sensation, and Salma Hayek, well, just wow. And then there's Carmen Electra and Vanessa Hudgens, whose one pieces with cutouts are the height of trendy. And bringing it home is Christy Brinkley, who always looks like she's stepping out of the pages of Sports Illustrated. But who's the stunner in this one piece? Kristen Bell, who's channeling her inner pretty woman. So it just goes to show, more is more when it comes to swimsuits this summer. So pass the sunscreen, please. And finally, I've heard of the cone of shame, the cone of silence, but hold on to your hats because cone bras are coming in hot. It's my what the fashion moment of the week. It's been three decades since the Material Girl debuted the Jean-Paul Gaultier comb bra, and we've spent the last 30 years associating it with her and her alone. But comb bras are carving their way into high fashion with updated versions of Gaultier's creation. From Kylie to Courtney to Meghan, who could seriously stop traffic with those cones? What we can say is they're far from looking like cone heads. Now, if we've learned anything from Madonna, it's that expressing yourself doesn't go out of style. Just be careful where you're pointing those things, would you? That's it for your Fashion Fix Friday. I'll see you around next time. This tweet, shared more than a hundred times, suggests people set their ceiling fans to spin counterclockwise for optimal cooling. But does that work? Let's verify. Our sources are the U.S. Department of Energy, Energy Star, and Home Depot. Both Energy Star and Home Depot agree. Spinning ceiling fans in a counterclockwise direction for a cooling effect in the summer works. So we can verify this as true. According to the DOE, this fan trick will allow you to raise the thermostat setting about four degrees Fahrenheit with no reduction in comfort. And that could save you money. Another hot tip, in the winter, make sure to revert your ceiling fan settings back to clockwise for a warming effect. Welcome back to DBL. We've got some celebrity couple news for you. So first of all, Gwen Stefani and Blake Shelton received their marriage license in Oklahoma. Could a 4th of July wedding be around the corner? And Angelina Jolie and The Weeknd are sparking dating rumors oh. after they've been spotted eating together because of course, if you're dining together, you're getting married at a <laughs> restaurant in Santa Monica. But what can we re what we really want to talk about is this new study from a cheating website by Ashley Madison. So it's revealing the top cities for affairs. So the top three are kind of no surprise, really. Miami, <laughs> Orlando. Orlando's and a surprise. Really? It's Isn't a family it like city. Hyped? There's nothing but chain restaurants there. What are you going to do? Yeah, how do you she, think they meet? Did, cheated uh, at Texas Roadhouse? I, I, yeah. I think that's where it's going Man, down. All that barbecue. That, uh, <laughs> that bread there. Las Vegas is up there. That one doesn't surprise me. But these ones were a surprise. So Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota, Boy. Boise, Idaho, 
Cincinnati, Ohio, and Atlanta, Georgia are all in the top 10. But also, the website found out that women are more likely than men to sneak outside the marriage and have affairs. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Obviously, you're surprised at Orlando. You're like, that is not Cincinnati the Cincinnati's super random as well from Ohio. That's very random. But I want to talk about the you women folk stepping out women on us. Folk. Look at oh him my God! Back what, in his chair what, what's that, like what's like... that about? You didn't. None of you guys seem surprised. I well, I think that when it comes to infidelity with women, then there is an emotional attachment mm. that is no longer there. Like there's a sever mm. in the relationship that isn't as fixable. Yeah. so to speak so I, I don't know I, I find it I find it surprising and not surprising at the same time can I use your argument not against you but I want to throw it at Steph she's saying that there's an emotional component that might be there yeah what if it's the other way around what if you were like me and my husband I'm not even gonna put Anthony's name to you you and your husband Mike we have a perfect emotional relationship but sexually I'm just not satisfied so this one time when I'm in Orlando we're gonna see what's up and then I'm gonna fly back and it's gonna never happen. <laughs> do you think that, that that could be a thing? I don't think women I, do that. You yeah, don't think I that don't, there's a, a, women want to be satisfied I sexually? I think that there are women who do that and have done that. I just don't think that it's the norm. No, I think guys are more likely to go out, have fun, and come home and act like nothing ever happened. I think but you girls guys know something that, happened because we're dumb and well, we're acting weird. I think girls will know. <laughs> women know, yeah. I mean, obviously, but I do think that if a woman cheats, she's done. She's like you moving think? on. She's like, it, yeah, it might take her a bit of time, but she's like, I'm done with this relationship and I'm looking for the next thing. So you don't think a woman that was the scrapper man is A's across the board, but in this one category, sex is like a D minus I just want to kind of men consider sex I mean obviously sex is important in any relationship right I mean it is it's a crucial part physical touch is one of the five love languages we all know that like it's important but I do think that women don't put as much of a priority on it as men maybe do mm. we're not looking to go and get our I know but you're also so not gonna go your whole <laughs> life without being please satis uh, sexually satisfied you the rest of your life yeah but women can you know what there are other things and other ways Al yeah they're called other people <laughs> Sure, we'll be right back. We'll leave you with that lovely thought. <laughs> Promotional consideration is brought to you by... If you're hitting the road for the holiday weekend, gas might not be as easy to get as usual. It's not necessarily a gas shortage, but a shortage of drivers to deliver it. Let's connect the dots. You've probably heard by now that gas prices are on the way up. That's not unusual this time of year as people take road trips for the summer and producers switch over to the more expensive summer blend. This year, some drivers are reporting that they've seen gas stations running dry. That's being driven in part by the truck driver shortage. Like many industries struggling to hire, trucking is also having a tough time. It's even harder to find oil tank drivers since they're required to have special qualifications to transport that payload. The National Tank Truck Carriers Group estimates up to 25% of these trucks are idle because there's no one to drive them. Energy experts also worry about human nature. The concern is when drivers spot the occasional empty pump, they may race to top off their tanks. This behavior can make a small gasoline shortage much bigger. The experts say it is not time to panic, but plan instead. Connecting to the DBL is your daytime destination. Does this feel good? This lifted my spirits. We're chatting with the stars. One of the highlights of my life. The turn up the notch on that. It is spectacular. Thank you. <laughs> and talking about what everyone is talking about. I want to set the record straight. I feel like I'm going to offend somebody here. I'm in so much trouble. This is nonsense. Al's not lying. What? Yes! Yes! DBL is all new every day. <laughs>
Welcome back to DBL. We love sharing your comments. Erica? I yes. Do. I love the, here, <laughs> and, and Erica, while you're looking for comments, here's how our viewers know that Erica's not ready. Cause you just go, we're looking forward to your comments. And you see Erica go. <laughs> <laughs> we do have fans. <laughs> <laughs> Casey said, I'm with Al. I can't believe Orlando. That's supposed to be a family friendly city. Uh, Jessica says, Orlando makes sense. Maybe they're sneaking away on amusement park dates. Really? Mm. That are that's cameras how everywhere in amusement park? <laughs> I don't oh, know. just keep your man in your vision when you're out in Orlando. <laughs> then actually, if you have to do that, you'll be with him anyway. DBL's news every day. We'll be back on Monday. Bye. Have a great weekend.